Yo, yo, welcome to PTA Sports Housing. I am your host, Pest Housing, the analyst. Love that Dan Housing. I gotta be honest. Going this long without Giants football sucks. It just does, man. It almost it almost felt like uh, it's been months since uh, I got to watch the New York football Giants play football. But uh, <laughs> here it goes, you know, back at it. Got a uh, got a big game coming up this week, and a uh, couple of things that we need to talk about over the course of the last I don't know week now. Yeah, been about a week. So uh, let's get into it. Um, hey, listen, this is a crazy story for me anyway, right? Because uh, I noticed earlier in the week that uh, the good folks at PFF Pro Football Focus went on ahead and they graded Dexter Lawrence the highest rookie player throughout this portion of the season. And, uh, you know, when I see stuff like this, right, I feel kind of vindicated. I feel really vindicated because uh, before the season started, right, uh, talked to a lot of people uh, on social media, talked to a lot of people, you know, face-to-face in person, uh, talk to a whole lot of people as, you know, why I liked the Dexter Lawrence pick. Um, you know, people thought that, you know, we were crazy for getting rid of Snacks Harrison, you know, trading him, getting the draft pick, and then, you know, picking picking up Dexter Lawrence. They were like, you know, you trade a, a, a guy who was a run stopper, and you pick up a guy who was a run stopper. And, uh, you know, I, I continuously talked about how, you know, that take was wrong. All right. Now, um, you know, I, I don't I don't get to watch a whole lot of college football. Right. I've said uh, in the past that, you know, I'm not going, you know, be that guy who's telling you about these college players because it, it's it's a whole lot of games, it's a whole lot of players. I don't have like a whole lot of time. Right. But what I typically do, and I've said this also in the past, is when when a player gets picked up, right, people are talking about him a, a whole lot after he gets picked up. Uh, I tend to go and I watch film on him. I just I tend to go and, and see like, hey, what's what's uh, this guy doing? And so, uh, you know, aside from looking at film from like Daniel Jones, right, because everybody went crazy off Daniel Jones. I actually watch film on Dexter Lawrence. All right. I, I went and I looked to see what this kid can do. Y'all know I love me some trenches. I wanted to see what uh, what Dexter Lawrence was all about, and I, I I tell you, man, when I when I saw the tape on this kid, right, I was I was pretty impressed, man. I, I'm not gonna lie, I, I was impressed. I said, yo, this kid's got moves, man. Uh, uh, he's got a great toolbox in terms of uh, you know getting the, getting a, a blocker off of him, being able to you know fill that gap, stop the run. I saw that. I was like, yeah, this is good. Uh, but then I also saw that there were times, right, in college, where you know, he was able to put pressure on, on the quarterback. You know, he was able to collapse the pocket a little bit. You know? And I was just like, man, yeah, all right. This 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 kid could be something. This kid this kid got some moves. So, like, I wasn't tripping off of the Destin Lawrence pick. I didn't think it was bad from the jump. I thought it was a good pick, all right? Uh, uh, he got a little overshadowed, right? Because cause he had he had a bunch of monsters around him on that D-line, and they was eating every week, okay? But he was out there, and he was doing his thing, too. So it wasn't like, you know, it, it wasn't like he wasn't putting stuff on tape. Man, and, and it's funny, right? Because, uh, you know, there was one specific game where, uh, you know, it, they, they played Duke, right? And I saw Dexter getting pressure on Daniel Jones, okay, and and Daniel Jones is a mobile quarterback, and I saw Des Lawrence eating against Duke, okay, so like, there was, <laughs> it was, it's funny because the film review kind of, kind of crossed paths, I was able to kind of watch him and Daniel Jones at the same time, all right, uh, when this kid was in the combine, he was mashing, all right? Ran a crazy 40 time, all right? Put up a bunch of reps on the bench. The, the kid's gigantic, okay? But he's athletic. 
and he's got moves. So I'm not surprised that that he's ranked so high right now. Now, is this going to continue? I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. But I, I'll tell you what, man. I talked about Dexter Lawrence so, you know, for so much time in, in this specific video because I really like this kid and I feel vindicated by all the people who told me we were dumb for picking him up. Uh, looks like our general manager might know what he's doing. I'm just saying. All right. So uh, another... Another topic that I saw was, you know, there was a lot of uh, a lot of players cut, a lot of players, you know, released or whatever, you know, become free agents. And, and it's it's funny because every time uh, this happens, man, I see a bunch of Giants fans, man, they're they're jumping up and down saying we got to get this person. We got to get that person. We got to get this person. Listen, I'm not that guy. OK, I don't see a person get cut and I instantly think, oh, we should go pick him up. I, I just don't. I, I'm sorry. I'm just I don't, man. Uh, maybe in a preseason. Right. A lot of times where a player, you know, he just doesn't fit the bill or, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a cap thing where they'll, you know, let somebody go. And I'm like, oh, man, yeah, that guy may be able to come on the Giants and do a little something, something. But like, you know, in the middle of the season, I, man, I don't know like this. It just doesn't make sense, you know, to go grab a guy that just got cut from a team in the middle of the season, you know, like, especially when, you know, you're talking about, you know, injuries and you talk about how important depth is and, and somebody just gets released. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm just I'm not always quick to, to jump on that bandwagon. But uh, I mean, listen, this is this is the way I, I feel and I will continue to feel this way when people around the league get cut. Um if we can get that person at a really team friendly deal, right? If we can get that person, you know, at a at a manageable cap number and not have to give them some stupid big contract and they can come in and be productive on the team, I'm all for it. But I'm not gonna like jump out of my skin every time somebody gets cut and goes, Oh my god, we should pick them up. Now that's not a slight on anybody, you know, who who has, you know, spoken to this over the course of the last few weeks, right? A lot of my peers uh, in the New York Giants YouTube community have made videos about these things. I watch them, right? Because I watch pretty much everything that uh, that I can find from the New York Giants YouTube community when I can, you know, when I can sit down and watch it or whatever, you know, and I don't necessarily like disagree with their takes. I'm just not, I'm just not, you know, jumping on a bandwagon to get these guys. So, hey, if, if we can pick up some of these guys and they're cheap, hey, let's do it. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Um... So, uh, the last thing I want to kind of talk about in this week in review, uh, man, uh, it's, it's really exciting news, man. Um, you know, I'm going to kind of get into the injuries, you know, when I kind of preview the game, but man, Saquon, this kid's a beast. He's, he practiced full pretty much all week. And he's, he's in there. He's doing a damn thing. And, uh, I gotta be honest, man. I'm excited and I'm excited about getting Saquon back now. You know, I said uh, I said that I didn't want him to come back until this game. Now we're at this game. Uh, I, I really hope that he is uh, managed well in terms of his snap count, right? Um, you know, I'm sure that he can handle a full workload, right? I'm sure he could because the kid's a monster. Um, but I, I really hope that we kind of manage the snap count a little bit, you know? Uh, I don't want us to have to put, you know, uh, have to put the team on his back. Uh, cause what I don't want is for him to, you know, get out there, uh, tweak his ankle again or something crazy like that. And then we lose him again. Like, I, you know, but like at the end of the day, like I'm, I'm ready for him to get out there and, and play ball. So, uh, you know, I, I'm going, I'm going to pray to the, to the football gods. Right. And I'm going to, uh, uh, ask them to watch over Saquon while he's out there doing his thing. Um, Evan Ingram also fully practiced. So, man, like this is looking good, right? This is looking like we're going to have, you know, some of our weapons. Um, you know, we're not going to have we're not going to have uh, 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 Sterling Shepard. Right. Uh, but like, man, we're going to have some, we're going to have some weapons out there. So, uh, old DJ, you know, he, he's going he's going to be able to maybe make a couple of things here and there happen. So um, <laughs> it's it's funny, though, right? Because uh, as we talk about this, right, as we speculate that that uh, Saquon and Evan Ingram <laughs> are going to play, uh, oh, head coach Pat Shermer, he is kind of tight-lipped about whether these guys are going to play. He keeps saying we're taking it day by day. We're going to see what happens and blah, 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 blah. Listen, we all know that they're going to play, right? Uh, uh, coach Shermer is trying to play chess right now. 
with the with the Cardinals. Maybe they're not going to play. Maybe they are going to play. Uh, but I mean, like at the end of the day, we all know uh, <laughs> it's it's uh, it's kind of funny, man, because I, I really I really expected him to come out and say, yeah, they playing. What are y'all going to do about it? But he's kind of being tight lip. You know, like I said, he's, he's trying to he's trying to play this this mental uh, chess with uh, with the Cardinals. And, um, you know, whatever. Like, I, I don't know, man. Like, if it was me, would I go out there and say that they're going to play? Probably not until the last minute like he's doing, right? Because, you know, I'm sure that the Cardinals are kind of like game planning, like they're going to be there, but you know, maybe you want to keep them in the dark, I guess. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what I would do in that situation, you know, as, as a coach. I, I, maybe, I'd, maybe I'd keep my mouth shut about it, too. Uh, so, like, I'm not I'm not mad at, at at the coach, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, like, pissed off or frustrated or none of that with, like, the way he's going about this. Like, I, I mean, hey, you're going to keep a tight lip. You're going to keep a tight lip. Uh, and, and we'll let the chips fall where they may come uh, Sunday. So, uh, I mean, we're going to see. Uh, <laughs> I, man, I don't know. I, I just expected uh, Coach Shermer to come out there and just kind of talk smack. Because, <laughs> like, like, at this point, like, what else, what else, he, what else are you going to get from him, right? I mean, you know, he's, he's kind of he's vanilla. He's kind of bland. Uh, doesn't really give you a lot of information, uh, but I, I mean, I was hoping you know maybe he'd come out and just be like, "Yeah, they playing. What y'all going to do?" But he ain't say it. But we all know, like it's it's kind of a foregone conclusion at this point. All right, um, let's go ahead and get into uh, the the preview for this game. Um, I've already you know, spoke about Saquon, spoke about Evan Ingram, practice full, probably going to play. They're not like uh, you know on the on the depth chart like saying that. They're they're not playing, you know. Uh, I'm, I mean, like I'm I'm looking at it right now. Uh, no, doesn't say that they're out. Doesn't say that they're questionable. Doesn't say that they're none of that. Uh, uh, what it does say is that Corey Ballantyne and Sterling Shepard are both out. Uh, they both got concussions. Hey, uh, it, it is what it is. Um, you know, Sterling was out there, right? He was kind of practicing a little some something, something. I think he was doing like non contact stuff, but. Uh, but uh, Ballantyne, he, he ain't been out there at all. So uh, these these two are in concussion protocol. Uh, it is what it is, man. So, you know, it, it sucks. It would be really nice if we had uh, Shep because, you know, then that's another weapon that we have. But once again, Golden Tate, he can go out there and he can make some things happen because that's that's what he wants. He wants that bigger role. So he's getting that bigger role. Uh, Ballantyne, I mean, like, we ain't really seen that much of Ballantyne, to be honest with you. Like, I... I thought we'd be seeing Ballantyne play a little bit more, but uh, so for some reason Grant Haley is uh, is is just beating him out. So I mean, it is what it is, right? I, I like what I see from Ballantyne. Uh, he's gonna be good in the future. We'll we'll you know we'll keep him out for right now. It is what it is. Um, man, I'm looking at this Arizona Cardinals uh, injury report. And there are a lot of players. Looks like it's like half the team. What we got here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 people are, are on this injury report right now. And there's only two of those 16 that were non football injury related, you know, whatever. Larry Fitzgerald, okay. OT Sizzle. Both of them, there was non football, non injury related. Cool, um, but I mean, like they got, you know, Zach Allen, he's out, right? Uh, DJ Foster, he's out. Uh, Brent Tooth, I'm not even sure who he is to be honest with you, but he's out. All right, and there's a bunch of guys that are questionable. So like, hey, you know, they're they're kind of dealing with injuries too. So uh, you know that that's just kind of the game of football. Um, so. Uh, we we're talking about like the the keys to this game, right? Um, man, this is this is gonna be a very interesting game here. Like, uh, you know, our defense, our defense is gonna have to like bend, but not break. All right, uh, the Arizona Cardinals are not very good in the red zone right now, and uh, we don't want to be that team that you know they catch fire and are killing it every time they get into the red zone. So I mean, like we already know. Kyler Murray, right? Kid's a stud, okay? He he's gonna get yards. He's just gonna get yards. He's gonna get yards through the air. He's gonna get yards through the ground. All right. We know he's gonna get yards. What we have to do is we have to get stout when we get in the red zone, okay? And just you know hold them to three three points. And every time they get in the red zone, we gotta hold them to three. We gotta keep them out of the red zone if we can, right? But if we can't keep them out of the red zone, hold them to three points. All right. I mean, like, 
that's that's just what it is. Um, and then like on offense, right? Our, our offense, we're gonna have to attack that secondary. All right. Now, the Arizona Cardinals don't have a terrible secondary, right? But as it stands right now, the secondary is not looking great, and they're allowing the most touchdown passes uh, of any team in the league. So you know if. If that's their weakness, man, we gotta attack that weakness. We gotta attack the secondary. That means that that Daniel Jones is gonna have to, you know, be smart with the football. He's gonna have to make good reads. He's gonna have to not hold on to the ball too long, which he's been prone to do. And because he holds on to the ball too long, you know, he misses. Uh, he'll miss a pass, or he'll throw behind the receiver and it gets picked off, or he gets smacked in the pocket and he fumbles the ball. So like. DJ is going to have to make good decisions, make good reads, get rid of the ball. Like, that's just what he's going to have to do. Um, I mean, this is, man, this game is, like, super interesting to me, man, because, like, you know, we got our first two quarterback picks in the draft duking it out, right? We got two teams who are uh, kind of rebuilding. They're in rebuild mode. Uh, we got two teams who are trying to kind of figure out what they are. Right. And uh, <laughs> and and you got an opportunity here, you know, the New York Giants. Anyway, they have an opportunity here, you know, to win a game that that's winnable. Like this is a game that is very, very winnable for the Giants. They just have to go out there and execute. And if they don't execute, then <laughs> then this this is going to be uh, it's going to be rough. Like, that's just what it is. Um, I. I gotta be honest, man. I feel I feel pretty good going into this game. Like I feel like this uh, this game could be fun to watch. I feel like this game could be back and forth, uh, uh, or it could be just like a, a an offensive struggle on both sides of the ball. But I mean, like I, I, I think that this game is gonna be a lot of fun to watch. I think this is gonna be one of those games where I'm jumping around and screaming and yelling. Well. I'm always jumping around and screaming and yelling when I'm watching the Giants, even even if I don't think they're gonna win. But like, this is this is one of those games, man, where where it's gonna be this gonna be exciting. Uh, I think people are gonna be talking about both these teams after this game. This this has the potential to be one of the better games this week. I, I mean, like I know on paper it doesn't like look like it, right? Because you got two teams that are, you know, they're trying to figure this thing out. But I mean, I think this could be one of the one of the more fun games that we see this weekend. So, uh, you know, there's that. Um, my prediction, my prediction on this game. Uh, honestly, I'm going to go ahead and say I think that the Giants win. I think that the Giants win in the fourth quarter. I think that it's close all the way. It's going to just be close, I, I think. Um, and when I say close, I mean like, you know, a touchdown is going to be the difference between the, the game is going to be a touchdown like the whole way. Um, and I think the Giants pull out the win in the fourth quarter. Uh, if, uh, you know, if this defense can make Kyler Murray make some mistakes, maybe it might be more than one touchdown. But I, but I, I think, you know, I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to probably be a nail biter. And uh, and I, I see the Giants pulling it out in the end. Um, so, so there, that's my, that's my thoughts, man. I think, uh, I think the Giants be able to pull this off. We're going to go ahead and get a win here and, uh, you know, be able to be able to build off of it. So, uh, so yeah, that's my take. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming and listening to me talk for a little bit. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit me up in those comments section. Uh, tell everybody about PTA sports housing. Love that Dan housing. I get up with y'all later. Go Giants. Deuces. <laughs>